All right, we're gonna look at some some cool Linux commands that you might have not known about. Now, obviously, uh, you know about ls listing uh, contents of directories, um, and you can see the blue are directories. Um, you have some files here, and you can of course do that. Um, but what I'd like to do is to see um, what's in each of these directories. I want to list recursively. So what I do is I'd tree into there and I can see kind of a hierarchical tree-like view. But even that's kind of a lot and I don't really want to sift through um, all of that output. So what I'd rather do is have a max level or depth, um, which we can start with one and we could just, you know, see each of them listed um, vertically. But uh, I want to go one level deeper, and now I can see just a nicer output there, and it'll show me um, the symbolic links, um, the file type by color, um, and another thing I could do is sort by size. And this is a common theme you'll see in most programs: is first you have dash s, which shows in well, bytes, because that's that should be four kilobytes, each directory, um, the metadata itself. It does not list recursively um, based off size, um, but each, each directory itself um, is about four kilobytes. Um, what I'd like rather is a human readable version of that, which you replace S with H, and then it'll show in kilobytes. But again, uh, and this is the same with LS, um, tree, LS, a lot of these don't, uh, list the sizes recursively. So if we run ls with the size, the same as tree on desktop, we can see in kilobytes, I suppose. But again, it doesn't list uh, recursively within those directories. I can't see the total size. So what I use instead is uh, du disk usage, um, and we'll pass in the. Uh, we can just do it, run it default and see what the output is. And that'll show recursively, and it's a lot of output. It'll show first um, the machine readable size in bytes. Um, but what I'd like, we can pass in dash H for human readable, um, and then it'll show the summary at the very end. If you just want that summary, you can run just uh, the summary. S is something different here. It's just a, a summary, so it'll just show that here. And then if you wanted the human readable version of that, just a summary, there you go. Okay, what's nice about the du command is that similar to the tree program, you can specify how many layers um, you wanna go deep, how many directories you wanna list. Um, so what we do is du and pass the d flag and then just go, let's say one layer deep and we want it human readable and point at desktop. And that is very nice. Um, we can see a summary at the very bottom uh, and then we can see in kilobytes, megabytes, each directory, and it's gonna aggregate and count recursively within those. Um, we can see an accurate listing. Um, although, what we can do even better is to sort of uh, list these ascending or descending in a sorted manner, because you can see kilobytes, megabytes, they're not really sorted in a nice way. So, unfortunately, the du command does not have a sort option or flag. So what we do is we pipe that into sort uh, and sort, like normally what I thought, okay, you'd have to run it uh, machine readable format so it could it could count it easily, but there is a dash H, a human readable uh, flag in sort itself. And then we can see that sorted in a nice manner, in a ascending manner. Um, and then we can reverse that too with sort if you want it uh, descending. So I'm in my home directory right now, but going back to that du command, uh, what's really nice is if we just go to um, the root directory, um, what we can do is uh, find an aggregated or kind of organized uh, way to see the, which folders uh, are taking up the most space. Um, so if we go human readable um, and remember the flag, which was um, depth, um, and then say, let's say only go one layer deep and let's, uh, find um, how many, what size each of these uh, uh, directories are taking at the root level. Um, and we can see it's gonna take a really long time. Um, and it's probably gonna um, have a lot of permission issues with that as well. Um, so I might run that with sudo. I might control C and, and exit that. It's gonna take a really long time. Um, but we could run that with sudo. And let's see what happens. 
and that's a much cleaner output. Um, you can see my home uh, directory takes up about 55 gigabytes. Um, Etsy, um, you have boot, bin, takes up zero, that's strange. Um, but it's just a much more readable output but it's only one directory deep. There are some, maybe some weird errors going on there. But you can see it's, it's much more uh, readable. And oh man, time shift. My backups are, take, or backups are taking 100 gigabytes, that's, that's crazy. Um, but uh, the the better way, better. That's from the terminal. Um, most distros have a a uh, program to do this for you in a more graphical and visual, uh, intuitive way. So although it's really nice to know how to do that from the terminal, um, and it may be quicker, uh, you should know the uh, disk usage analyzer and, and various other programs that do this in a more graphical and intuitive way. So this is Disk Usage Analyzer on Linux Mint, which I had to install myself. On Fedora, I believe a, a program is built in by default to do this. Um, but as you can see, it's it's a much uh, cleaner, uh, kind of more graphical, visual way that you can see and, and break down uh, each layer, um, each layer and then its directory recursively, um, which is really nice to see disk usage. But um, we're going to focus more on the terminal, so I will we'll move on. All right, so this is a quick word on shortcuts and how after you type something in, um, of course you can always tab if you're if there's something that matches, um, that's pretty obvious. But um, what uh, makes you much faster is using Control Arrow for one, um, and then Control A to jump all the way back, and then Control E to jump all the way forward, um, and then once you're um, like right here, you want to control W just to remove that single flag to sort by uh, something else. Um, but then I wanted to um, delete everything uh, before there, so I'll control U. Um, and then, you know, if I had something else, um, there is a way to undo as well. If you want to control K, you can delete everything in front of you. Um, and these are just really fast ways to jump around. Another thing that I kind of learned too late was that uh, you can easily jump back uh, to uh, a directory that you were in before. Um, so for example, I was in home um, and then I was in documents and dev. Now I jumped to the root directory slash. Um, but what I want to do is jump back into document slash dev. Um, and so what I you'd think I might do is home documents dev. Um, but what would be much better is to just run a simple dash or hyphen and that'll jump back to the directory that I was in and then CD um, dash yet again will should jump me back into a root um, like it does so I can just kind of toggle back and forth between those. So if I just control L and clear that output you can do that but I don't know who, who actually does that. Uh, if you control L uh, another thing I wanted to show is um, oftentimes if you were to run a file um, like if I were to do this, like there's a background process um, that I have to run um, some file that watches some other file and it takes up a terminal. Um, let's just pretend that actually existed and it got me into a position where it did this. I'm not running sleep. I ran the command that did something to the point where um, it's in the foreground and I can't really do anything and I'd have to control C to get out. Um, I'll just usually open up another terminal. A lot of people use like uh, different pro multiplexing programs to do that. I just control shift plus and then I can um, alternate between my tabs with alt one and two. Um, and that's what I typically do. So if I ran a program that took over control of the TTY, um, what I could do is either um, stop it with control C, um, but that's more of a forceful termination. Um, what I could do is control Z, um, which kind of pauses that process. And what actually sends is SIG stop, which basically um, sends a, a pause request from the user. Um, and then it's still gonna exist um, as a process afterwards, um, which can be brought back with uh, foreground. And then Control C um, would more uh, forcefully interrupt it or, or stop it entirely, which sends the uh, number two, the signal interrupt. And there's really only a, a couple of these that you really use. Like I don't know what half of these do, but really all you end up using is uh, the Control C, which is signal interrupt. Um, you might pause and unpause um, with 
control Z uh, foreground, background, um, toggling back and forth with these. Um, and then the only other one that's probably useful is signal kill. This is the most forceful uh, um, flag that you can have. This is um, cannot be ignored whatsoever. Um, and you would just run kill nine. Um, I don't know if, if some program like was crashing like it normally does, uh, you would probably um, not kill nine because kill takes a, a signal uh, ID process, which is like this, and that's kind of hard. You don't want to work with those. What you'd rather do is like P kill or kill all, which takes instead like a name. Another kind of cool thing, um, if I wanted to, let's say this was like way longer, um, and I wanted to count the number of PDF files that I had, um, in other words, files ending in, you know, PDF, uh, what I could do is ls or actually find um, dot as in the directory that I'm in currently uh, name and then all files that end in uh, PDF um, and then it should count those fairly well but say this was even longer and then I couldn't I didn't want to count each one um, instead have uh, word count do it for me and word count can be really used for anything my face is in the way but uh, with the dash L uh, you can uh, count the line occurrences um, because this is four lines one two three four and that could be a nice easy way to, to count things so here's another instance of that word count, which really is more of a line count or a record or row count. Um, something that's useful is um, listing the amount, number of packages that you have. Um, I'm sure there's a very um, equal equivalent in Fedora distributions, but if you're in uh, Debian uh, distributions, you would have apt um, and you could list um, all of your files. And this is gonna be really verbose output, but it's gonna be like something like 8,000 um, and this shows all of my packages. Uh, but what I could do is count all of them uh, with that very command. And I should have something around 84,000. Um, but I know I didn't install 84,000 packages all by myself. Uh, so a nice command or program is appmark, um, which uh, can show you which uh, programs or which packages rather are uh, installed manually versus installed automatically. Um, and the most useful one is show manual or print the list of manually installed packages. And then I could count those manually installed packages with that WC-L and it looks like I've manually installed over 2000 packages. Okay, that is gonna sum up the video. If you like these uh, sort of uh, informal, just uh, navigating through the terminal and, and playing around with the different programs and commands, uh, let me know. And uh, like the video, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And thanks for watching.